Welcome students. In this video, we're going to cover a couple new skills you're going to need in order to complete your at-home work this week. Um, so I'm going to open up this PDF uh, and I just want to stress to you, it is a multi-page PDF. Right? This assignment uh, is going to require you to model up, uh, then place the uh, the models or the, the 3D parts into these drawing sheets and finally go back and add some dimensions to it. And so all the information you need is on this sheet to make these parts. Uh, we've got information about the overall size and shape of the parts based on the picture and the dimensions. Uh, and also on parts like this one, uh, we've got information about the location of the hole. I can see this hole's center point is two inches over and an inch and a half down from the top, uh, as well as the size of the hole. So I'm gonna walk you through the whole process of making this first shape. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about how we can get um, this cutaway feature positioned in the proper spot left to right. And then I'm gonna leave part number three completely up to you. So I'm gonna kind of gradually uh, turn some responsibility over to you here this week. Um, you've got a real good example of what part number three looks like and we'll talk about or have talked about uh, all the skills you need to do part number three for this week in this video tutorial. Uh, and some of it we've covered in prior classes. So that's where we're heading with this video. Uh, it might be a long one. Uh, and remember, this is probably going to take you three days to do. So feel free to pause. You know, uh, when you get one done, maybe you'll come back to the next one the following day. So I'm going to go into Inventor. Uh, I want to make a new part. And I'm going to model up that part for uh, number one. So first of all, I need to start with a 2D sketch. I'm going to pick a drawing plane. And I'm going to draw a rectangle to the size that part was. Now, I, I drew the part out the first time, so I know it's four inches by three inches. So I'm just going to type those numbers in. Uh, I'll click my magnifying glass here. Right, and then I can hit enter. And I've got this locked in four inches wide, three inches tall. And that's what I want. So I'm going to zoom extents. And I got to come back here and check four, three. Uh, and then up here it tells me this piece is one inch thick or has a depth of one inch. So I'm going to go into Inventor and I'm going to extrude this part out one inch. Right. Now I need to get that hole in there. And this is a two part process. Um, if you've ever been in a woods or a metals class and you've had to drill a hole in something, you know that when we drill a hole, we mark the center point of the hole. Uh, and then we pick the drill bit that's the correct size for our application. And that's going to kind of be the process we follow in Inventor here. I'm going to sketch the center point of the hole. I'll make sure I've got a dimension to the proper location. Uh, then I'm going to come back and pick uh, the correct size for the hole. So I'm going to start by right clicking on this face and say I want to start a new sketch. Uh, this is a new tool we haven't used yet. We're going to cover the point tool here. So I'm going to click on point. Uh, and then I'm just going to go kind of randomly on the face of this object and I'm going to put a point in. And uh, the points come through is light green, so it's maybe hard to see on my screen, but it's right here uh, where my cursor is now. So hopefully you can see that light green object. Okay, now I'm gonna click Escape to free me from the point tool. And I'm gonna come up top to my toolbar and use this general dimension tool to get the location correct for this. So I'm gonna first of all, click on my point. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna come back to this vertical line on the edge and click. Uh, you can see this drags out the dimension that it is right now from the edge. Uh, I don't want it to be 1.77, whatever that is. I want it to be two inches. So I'm gonna type the number two in that box. Uh, then I'll click, click the check mark and it'll move it over the exact distance I want. Uh, now I know this point from looking at my dimension drawing is 1.5 inches from the top. So again, I'm grabbing the dimension tool again. Click the horizontal line on the top of my object. I click the point. Uh, now I'll click again to open up that dialog box and I can type in an inch and a half or 1.5. Okay. So now I've got this point locked in the correct location. It's the proper distance over from the edge, the proper distance down. Uh, that point is going to be the center point of my hole. So I'm going to say finish sketch. And the point was the only thing I needed to sketch. Now I'm going to come up to my 3D model bar and I'm going to grab the hole tool. Uh, and you can see there's only one point there, so it's probably making some positions on your screen as well. And now I was in and already created a hole this morning using Inventor. So mine defaulted to last used. Your screen may look a little different. 
And so let's just double check where it says type. And if type is closed, click the triangle next to it to open it. Uh, we want to make sure simple hole is checked and we don't want a seat for it. Okay? We want the termination to be through all uh, and we want the direction set so it's going through the object. And that should be your default. Uh, if you don't have a hole in your object, if your screen looks like this, it's just got a gold ring but no hole, uh, you may have to flip the direction the other way. And then down here, this is where we set the diameter of the hole. Uh, again, we'll check that PDF. This note down here is our hole note. It tells us it's one inch diameter. And that's what that little no smoking symbol means, diameter, one inch, uh, and it goes all the way through our object. So I've got this set for one inch. I can click OK and I've got this part modeled up. So go ahead and save this, if you haven't already, to your, your G drive, your Google drive in your IED folder. Okay, and we'll call it practice part one. I'm gonna write out the word one because I've already used the numeral uh, as I made the original one for you. Okay. So, now you're going to go on, model up the other parts more than likely, and then we'll place them into a drawing sheet. So I'm going to go File. Remember, we'll click the New button. That'll bring us to this SHS template that we created last week. Uh, and then I can open up the drawing file with the SHS title block. So I ask you to fill out this title block beforehand. Uh, we can put most of our information in here. In a future lesson, we'll learn how we can edit uh, what we've filled in here if we do it incorrectly. Right? So I'm gonna put in that I'm in a PLTW course. Uh, typically you would see an engineer right there, first initial and then their full last name. So you could do that in this block. Uh, the name of this drawing, this was practice part number one. And then the drawing scale, I already know from looking at the example, right, which is what we're trying to recreate. Right, the drawing scale is going to be one to two. So one, one unit of measurement on this sheet equals two units of measurement in real life. So I'm going to come in here for my drawing scale and I'll go one colon two. And then I'll click OK. <clears throat> uh, because this drawing file was created on an older version of Inventor, uh, you might get the same message I am. We'll just go ahead and click OK on that. So now I'm in my drawing sheet. My title block is filled in. Uh, I'm gonna come up here and click on base. Right? Since this is the only shape I have, uh, it just drops it in there. If you've got multiple tabs open down here, uh, you may have to click the search button to open an existing file. And I'll click the arrow going to the top. That'll shoot out my top view, shoots out my right side view. I'll shoot out my isometric view. And you can see here it defaulted to a scale of one half. That's the same as one to two. Uh, if it doesn't come out that way, you just got to click this drop down menu and make sure half is checked. So I'm looking at my drawing. I've got hidden lines here. All right. If you don't have hidden lines, remember you got to come back to your base. Uh, make sure this first style tile is pushed for hidden lines. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to come up here and I'll pay a little attention to this isometric. I'm going to click the shaded style tile on that one. And I just want to shade it in, right? We're not going to dimension. We're not going to put hidden lines or center lines on this one. Okay. Uh, and that's actually my next task. I need to put center lines on all three of these drawings to show where the center of that hole is. So I'm going to hold down my shift key. And then with my mouse, I'm just left clicking to select these three drawings. Now, once they're all selected, we're going to right click. And that'll bring up this menu. I'm going to click on automated center lines. And then this first option right here, whole feature is already pushed down. Uh, I like to get in the habit of checking the first four. So I'm gonna hit fillets, cylinders, revolved, and right? then I'll come over to projection. Right? My first option's already picked. I want it to show up in the axis parallel as well. So I'm gonna pick the second projection. And eventually we're gonna do some circular patterns. So I always click that one when I come in here too. Then we'll say, okay. Right, and I want you to think like an engineer. We gotta evaluate our solution now. Look at your drawing. Does it have center lines in all three views now? If it did, you automated them correctly. Uh, if not, you may need to go back, make sure you've got the first four options checked under uh, hidden lines. You've got both projections and that circular pattern feature pushed down. 
So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and save this in my G Drive or my Google Drive, right? and then we're gonna add uh, some dimensions to it. So I told you this video would walk you through the entire process for part number one. We're gonna go put some dimensions on uh, using that baseline tool we did in class yesterday. So I'm gonna click the baseline tool. Uh, I'm gonna start off with my dimensions that pertain to width or left to right. So I'll click the left and right side of my object. Okay. Now I'm gonna come in and click the center line or the center mark. Now you'll notice it's picking all five of these points. I'm okay with that because next I'm gonna right click, left click, and then as I drag my mouse up, you can see it knows to dimension to the center point on that center line. So I'll get my polka dots, I'll left click, right click, left click, and there I've got my information about the width. Now I'll put in some information about this object's height. I'll go back to baseline, click the top, click the bottom, click the center lines, right click, left click, drag this out till I get polka dots, left click, right click, left click. Uh, we've got our dimensions pertaining to the height of this object. I'm just gonna grab my dimension tool now and I'm gonna dimension between these two horizontal lines to give me info about the depth. And the depth, remember, in our top view is the same as the left to right dimension in the right side view. And so I don't actually need to do any dimensioning over here. And then the last thing we want to do to make this match our example is we need to put this whole note down here at the bottom. I will show you the whole notes next. Uh, on the annotate tab, we're going to come to this hole and thread button. Uh, we'll click on that. I'm going to come over. I'll turn this circle red by hovering over it. I'll click once. And then when we put in whole notes, we always want to drag this leader line off at a little bit of an angle. We should never have it coming down straight off of six o'clock or nine or 12 or three. Uh, we always wanna have this coming off at a little bit of an angle, right? Just so it stands out better. So I'm gonna block my dimension right there. And then I'm gonna go click save again because I've got this particular drawing totally dimensioned now. We've created a technical drawing again, we could bring out to the shop uh, and have somebody reproduce it based off of the information that we've got here. So now I'm on the annotate tab. I got to go back to place views right? and eventually you're going to click new sheet and you're going to place your other two views on this as well. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that because like I said, we've covered all that information in here. Uh, you know, when you get to drawing three, if you're not sure how to annotate the center lines or automate the center lines rather, uh, you can come back in and rewatch sections of this video. Okay. I do want to show you right, how to get uh, like this feature here in the middle of this object. And so I'm gonna go in and start one new part file and I'll do part, uh, but not all of this object for you. And so I'm gonna draw a four inch wide uh, by two and a half inch tall rectangle. And then I'm gonna use the subtractive method to cut this slot out of the whole thing. So I'm gonna go back to the house up here. That'll bring me to my home page. I wanna do a new part file. And I said I was going to do a four by three, I think. I'm sorry, four by two and a half inch tall rectangle. All right, so I always like to confirm that looks good. I'll finish my sketch. And now if I come back in here, I can see the overall depth of this object is three inches. So I'm going to extrude to three. And now I want to show you how I would go about uh, using the subtractive method to get this, this slot cut through here in the correct location. And, um, so if I look at the right side view over here, I can see one edge of the slot is an inch over from the, uh, the left edge. The other edge of the slot is two inches over. Uh, and then if I look here, it's got an overall depth of one inch. So what that's telling me about the actual size of this slot is it's an inch wide and an inch tall. So since I'm using the subtractive method, I'm gonna go into Inventor and on this face, I wanna sketch a rectangle that's an inch wide uh, and an inch tall. So again, I'm gonna come into the whoops, 3D model tab. I'll say start 2D sketch. I wanna sketch on this face. 
right, and I'm going to take the rectangle tool and I'm going to start my rectangle just up at the top here. I want to be right on the edge of my object. It kind of snaps to it. And then I'm going to say I want a rectangle an inch wide, an inch tall, right, and I'll hit enter. Right. Now, this line down here is purple because it's constrained or it's locked into place. This line is always going to have to be an inch from the top. Right. These two lines are green uh, because they're not locked into space yet. So what I want to do to get this in the correct location is I'll grab my dimension tool. I'm going to click the edge of my object, right, the edge of this new feature. And right now it's just kind of a random number. If I go back to my plan here, I can see this slot needs to be over exactly one inch uh, from this edge. So that's what I'm going to type in this dialog box here is one inch and it'll slide that object over. So this object's an inch over. Uh, it's dimensioned an inch wide down here at the bottom. Uh, and over here, I've dimensioned it an inch tall. So now I've got this object the correct size and it's in the correct location. And I can finish my sketch. Go to extrude. I'm going to change extrude from distance to all. I want to cut. Uh, and I'll pick that one. Right? And you can see it's just going to cut away everything behind there. And so that looks like a good start. So I think next, if it were me, I would come to this face and I'd sketch another rectangle uh, and subtract some more material across the front. <clears throat> and I'd probably go to the bottom and do one more sketch right, to create this little rectangular notch in here once I was finished. So that's kind of the basics of what we want to do this week. Uh, I know this video was a little longer than I typically do, but you've got three days at home. Uh, to work on this assignment. So get started early, ask questions if you've got them, uh, and when you're all finished, convert this to a PDF and submit it via Google Classroom.